Paul Vario, a notorious figure in the annals of American mob history, Vario's legacy is a chilling tale of power, violence, and intrigue. As a high-ranking member of the infamous Lucchese crime family, he orchestrated a criminal empire that struck fear into the hearts of many. Yet his story is not confined to the pages of criminal lore alone. But who was the man behind the legend? What fueled his ascent in the world of organized crime? What drove him to become one of the most feared figures in the Lucchese crime family? Could it all trace back to his early life? Join us today as we take a step into his world. The man who would later become a notorious figure in the American Mafia began his life in the gritty neighborhood of South Brooklyn's Old Mill section. Born on July 10, 1914, in the heart of New York City, Vario's early years were indelibly shaped by the environment in which he was raised. South Brooklyn's Old Mill section in the early 20th century was a melting pot of cultures and communities, but it was also a place rife with poverty, crime, and a sense of camaraderie among its residents. It was in this unforgiving urban landscape that Vario took his first steps. Growing up in Old Mill, young Paul was surrounded by an eclectic mix of people, many of whom had their own struggles and aspirations. This environment, though tough, fostered a sense of resilience and resourcefulness that would later prove valuable in his criminal career. The neighborhood's tight-knit communities and a strong sense of loyalty left an indelible mark upon Vario. And as Vario grew older, he navigated the challenges and opportunities that came with his environment. His upbringing in this rugged neighborhood would become the foundation upon which he built his reputation as a formidable figure in the Lucchese crime family, ultimately leaving an indelible mark on the criminal underworld of New York City and beyond. At the tender age of 11, Paul Vario found himself ensnared in the clutches of the juvenile justice system due to an unlikely transgression, truancy. This early encounter with the law marked a pivotal moment in Vario's life, foreshadowing a trajectory that would ultimately lead him into the ranks of organized crime. In 1925, Vario's youthful curiosity and rebellion led him down a wayward path. Truancy The act of skipping school without authorization was a relatively common issue among adolescents of the time. However, Vario's experience with truancy took a more serious turn than most. It was the response to his truancy that set the stage for his future criminal endeavors. Instead of receiving a mere reprimand or a slap on the wrist, young Paul Vario was sentenced to seven months in juvenile detention. This sentence was a significant escalation for a boy barely into his teenage years. Juvenile detention during this era was often far from a rehabilitative experience. Many institutions focused on punitive measures rather than addressing the underlying causes of juvenile delinquency. It was in this harsh environment that Vario likely encountered other troubled youth, absorbed valuable streetwise knowledge, and perhaps even made connections that would later prove advantageous in his criminal career. While Vario's truancy and subsequent detention may appear as minor infractions in the grand scheme of his criminal exploits, they were early indicators of his defiance against authority and a glimpse into his resilience in the face of adversity. His life, as complex as it was in the criminal underworld, was also marked by significant facets of family life, including marriages and children. These aspects offered a glimpse into the dual existence he led, balancing the responsibilities of a family man with the demands of a mobster. Vario's first marriage was to a woman named Vita. Together, they embarked on a journey that included the joys and challenges of raising a family. The couple had three sons, Peter, Paul Jr., and Leonard. These children were born into a life that would eventually be touched by the criminal activities of their father. However, Vario's first marriage did not stand the test of time and he eventually divorced Vita. The reasons for their separation are not widely documented, but it was a significant turning point in Vario's personal life. Now, before we continue with the video, please take a second to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press that bell icon as well. This helps our viewership and our channel longevity. Thank you. After his divorce with Vita, Paul Vario entered into a second marriage, this time with a woman named Phyllis. This marriage added a layer of complexity to his personal life as he navigated the intricacies of family dynamics within the backdrop of his criminal career. The presence of children and the responsibilities of parenthood did not shield them from the harsh realities of their father's world. Vario's involvement in organized crime exposed his family to danger, scrutiny, and the ever-present risk of being drawn into the criminal activities of their patriarch. 
The Vario family's involvement in criminal enterprises was not limited to Paul himself. Over the years, his sons, particularly Peter and Paul Jr., became embroiled in the criminal world as well, following in their father's footsteps to varying degrees. In a world where loyalty to the family was paramount, the Vario family's ties extended beyond blood relations. The relationships and loyalties formed within the criminal syndicate often blurred the lines between family and criminal associates, making it difficult to distinguish one from the other. One of the defining characteristics of Paul Vario's persona was his notorious temper, which was known to flare up in a violent and often unpredictable manner. Throughout his life, he left a trail of incidents that showcased his short fuse and willingness to resort to physical violence. One of the most notorious instances illustrating Vario's explosive temper occurred during a seemingly routine dinner outing with his second wife, Phyllis. The incident unfolded when the Mater D accidentally spilled wine on Phyllis's dress. Rather than addressing the matter calmly, Vario erupted in a fit of rage. He physically assaulted the Mater D, delivering several blows before the unfortunate server managed to escape to the safety of the kitchen. This incident served as a stark reminder of Vario's propensity for violence, even in mundane situations. Vario's temper extended beyond isolated outbursts at restaurants, too. He had a reputation for reacting violently when provoked or when he perceived disrespect. This reputation was a crucial element in maintaining his dominance and fear factor in the criminal world. It wasn't just those in the service industry who fell victim to Vario's explosive anger, either. His associates within the criminal underworld knew all too well the consequences of crossing him. Vario's brutal demeanor earned him both respect and fear among his peers and subordinates, ensuring loyalty through intimidation. Standing six feet tall and weighing 240 pounds, Vario's imposing physical stature only amplified the impact of his temper. He was not quick to anger, but when he did, the consequences were swift and often brutal. His physical presence alone was often enough to quell dissent or disobedience. The legendary mob boss also had a particular way of conducting business to minimize his exposure. He never owned a telephone, making it difficult for law enforcement to tap into his communications. Meetings with multiple individuals were avoided, ensuring that no one could later testify to his involvement in criminal activities. The combination of his explosive temper, physical dominance, and meticulous approach to criminal operations made Paul Vario a formidable figure in the world of organized crime. Vario's violent tendencies left an indelible mark on his legacy, and his name became synonymous with the ruthless and brutal world of the Mafia. Now, as always, if